service with a difference it is the 28th of march 2021 and you will notice the palm leaf behind me um, it is palm sunday as we celebrate with the crowds in jerusalem as they welcomed jesus into jerusalem welcome him as the coming messiah the coming savior um, with today being palm sunday it is the first day of the last week of jesus's life and so this week for us is is known as Holy Week and we will be looking each day this week at a different title that Jesus held and how that affects us as we claim allegiance to Jesus as we recognize ourselves as his disciples. We are still busy with our sermon series Living the Gospel Story and today we are looking at how one story changes many stories. We are reading today from Psalm 118 from verse 1 to verse 2 and from verse 19 to verse 29, give thanks to the Lord for his good, his love endures forever. And the psalmist speaks about opening the gates of the temple so that he can come in and, and worship God, that he can come in and give thanks to God. Um, and as we read this psalm Christologically, as we lead, read it in light of Christ, 
we recognize that Christ is, is the gate through which we enter to be able to worship God, to be able to give God thanks for all that God has done. And then we're going to be reading um, from Mark chapter 11, from verse 1 to verse 11. It is the story of Christ entering into Jerusalem from Mark's perspective. Again, I'm going to ask that you put this on pause as you read through those readings. And as we give God thanks for those readings, we pray that He will bless them to us as we reflect on them in this moment. As is tradition on Palm Sunday, we take a palm leaf, we cut off some palm blades, and we will be turning these palm blades into a palm cross. And that cross is meant to remain with us throughout the year um, in a place we can see it just as a reminder of our sin, our call to repentance, our call to reflection. Because what starts off as celebration on Palm Sunday ends off as crucifixion on Good, Good Friday. And what starts off as crucifixion on Good Friday ends up a celebration of resurrection on Easter Sunday. And so I'm going to be helping you take a palm blade and turn it into a palm cross. And so what we have here is a palm blade that has been cut off of the palm leaf, the palm frond. And you will notice that the palm blade tapers a little bit. Um, and so what I want you to do is as you open up the blade, which has a natural crease down the middle, if you hold the blade on the edges of the wider side of the blade, I want you to hold it there and pull that blade apart. And so you've got two parts of the blade. I'm going to ask that you hold the one horizontally and the other one you will hold vertically. Um, the horizontal side you're going to bring up against the vertical side at the back and you're going to have a little bit sticking out on the one side and then obviously the rest of the blade sticking out on the other side. This little bit is about the same width as this blade and the reason it's going to be the it must be the same width as the blade is because you're going to fold the horizontal blade forward over the vertical blade and you're going to fold the long side over the vertical blade the other way. Then you're going to take the vertical, fold it down, you're going to fold the long one up and then you're going to take it the top of that long one you're going to put it into that little pocket that you have made at the back if it doesn't go through it's the wrong pocket and then you're going to slide it all the way through and you're going to pull it down tightly and you'll know it's right so far if you let it go and it holds itself up and what you're going to do is you're going to take this vertical one and you're going to bend it backwards and put it through that same pocket that you pulled it through now and you're just going to put it in reverse and then you're going to crimp it and that will be the vertical side of your cross then you will take the horizontal side the horizontal blade and you are going to put it through the front pocket and you're going to turn it away from you and put it back into that same pocket and crimp it and turn it around and you have your palm cross. And so we have taken a palm blade and we have turned it into a palm cross. As you work with this blade off of a palm leaf or a palm frond, um, you will know that it's pretty insignificant when it is still connected to, to the palm leaf. And it's even less significant when that leaf is connected to a palm tree. And it's even less significant when that palm tree is a part of a grove of, of palm trees. Yet for that moment, while you were working with this leaf or watching me work with this leaf, it was significant. Whether you got it right or, 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 or didn't get it right, it makes no difference. For this moment, our focus and our attention was on this blade and it held meaning for us. And we hold meaning for God. We're all important to God. And we might think sometimes, you know, that we're only one of seven billion, almost eight billion. But we are, we are each that one blade that God is working on at this moment. And it is a long moment. It's a moment that lasts into all of eternity. Um, but God is taking us and turning us from something insignificant and broken into something meaningful, something that is useful, something that is significant um, and sometimes we don't see the twists and the turns coming 
But God is always working in us. Whether we, we believe in God or, or don't believe in God, it makes no difference. God is always at work in us because we are that one blade that He is working on. And in terms of the story of our lives, the, this palm blade has become a part of that story. This palm blade has changed us just a little bit. And it, and it might be a good change. Um, it might be a frustrating change if we struggle to, to get it from a palm frond into a cross. Um, it might be a meaningless change as we are just swamped with so many other things that we are thinking about. It might be a meaningful change as it becomes a cross that will remind us throughout the year of our sin and the reason Jesus needed to come into Jerusalem, the, need, the reason he needed to die and, and rise from the dead as he defeats death. Um, it, it could be meaningful to us as it becomes a part of the ashes that we will be marked with next, next year, Ash Wednesday, as we remember that we are from dust and to dust we're going to be returning. And so this palm frond, this palm blade from the palm frond, at least could, could become a part of the liturgy of our lives or it could mean nothing for us. As Jesus enters Jerusalem in today's reading from Mark, we, we see clearly from within the story that God works with individuals. He doesn't change the heart of the crowd. He changes the heart of the people within the crowd. Jesus is coming into Jerusalem and, and the crowd is welcoming him with hallelujahs. They are welcoming him with blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And, but, but, but we find in the story that even though Christ's sacrifice is for everyone, not everyone is going to be changed. Um, God is not changing the life of the crowd. God is changing the lives of the individuals who are in the crowd. The crowd who is welcoming him in now will be shouting for his crucifixion by the end of the week. Though The crowd who is worshipping him now will not be worshipping him by the end of the week. And so as we read the story a little bit further and as we, we, we take it to, the, to beyond the crucifixion, we see it's a collection of individual stories that are put together to help us understand the gospel story. Um, Peter's going to deny Jesus three times. Um, Jesus forgives him. He redeems him. He welcomes him back to the family. And that's part of Peter's story. That's a story that has changed Peter's life and has changed our lives. Um, Jesus was meant to be coming a savior of the world. Judas thought he was coming to defeat Rome. And so he tries to turn Jesus' hand. But, but that doesn't work. And when it all falls apart... Judas is so wrapped up in guilt that he is not willing to seek God's forgiveness and he takes his own life. That's Judas' story. John never leaves Jesus. John is with Jesus at the trial. He's with Jesus at the crucifixion. Um, he is with Jesus when Jesus says to John, John, this is my mother from now on. She'll be your mother. Says to his mother, from now on, John will be your son. And so that's a part of John's story. Mary's story, she, she has her heart pierced by a sword as she watches her, her son being put to death. Pilate can find no basis for the accusations against Jesus and he tries to set him free twice. The Roman centurion who is overseeing the crucifixion of Christ recognizes Jesus as the Son of God and his story is that he is the first human within the Gospel of Mark to recognize Jesus as the Son of God. And so each story that is told in Scripture is the story of a changed heart and a changed life. It's a story of how the gospel has changed one person's life and how that, that story has affected the lives of those around them. Um, when we allow the gospel story to change our lives, when we allow it to affect our story, when we live out the gospel story or, or when we fail to live out the gospel story, our story will affect every single story around us. Um, whether we worship God or pretend to worship God, whether we live out our faith or only speak about living out our faith, our story affects many stories. Everything we do um, affects everyone else. Everything we do affects everyone else. Nothing can be done in isolation. If one person throws stones through the church roof and the leaders get anti with us and they put a big fence around the church, the church becomes a place that needs to be protected instead of becoming a place of protection for those who need to be protected. When the Spirit brings revival, it's not to the community or to the whole church. It is to, to each individual within the church. God touches each of our lives. God seeks to bring 
bring transformation into each of our hearts. Each palm blade that we are working with is important to us. Each one of us is important to God. And when we take all those palm blades together, when we take all those palm leaves together, it makes up the whole tree. God doesn't work in the crowd. God works in you, He works in me, and when all of us are transformed, the crowd is automatically transformed. If you want a different community, it starts with you being different, and it starts with me being different, and when we're all different, the community will be different. If Christ healed Africa for the healing of the nations, it begins with a Christ healed me. It begins with a Christ healed you. And so, as God works in us, as we worked with that palm blade, God takes something that is broken, and now has no purpose and no significance, and He helps us transform it into something that is beautiful, into something that will bring Him glory, into something that will bring Him, him honor. He takes us and He makes something of us so that others will be able to see Him as He is raised up in our lives. Today and during Holy Week, we are invited once again to, to rethink um, and reorient the way we think about our own humanity. How do we define ourselves as people? And, and I, want you, I want to encourage you to see your humanity as as that thing which is identified by your union with Christ. The closer your union with Christ, the more human you are. Um, the suffering Savior helps us. The suffering Savior helps us to be our best self. He helps us to write our best story. Because our best story is a story that is in union with Jesus. And so during Holy Week, we, we are going to be looking at what it means to identify with the God who is, the God who was, the God who is to come. Um, during Holy Week, we're going to be, be looking at what it means to identify with, with Christ as He fulfills all the offices of, of Israel, the office of priest, the office of prophet, the office of king, as He fulfills the office from Isaiah as the one who is to be betrayed, the one who is to be raised from the dead. And, and I want to invite you on this journey as we not only enter into Jerusalem, but as we enter into the darkness and into the celebration of this Holy Week. Let's pray. And so Lord Jesus, as you take these palm blades and turn them into something beautiful and some, something significant, we know who we are. Sometimes, Lord God, we know we think too highly of ourselves. Sometimes we don't think highly enough. And so we ask, Lord Jesus, that you help us see ourselves as you see us. That we are not too little or too great, but that we are sacred and that we are beautiful and that we are useful. Help us, Lord God, as we journey through this week to see you and know you and to be a part of everything that you are doing in this world, in this community, in our families, in our lives. We pray this, Lord Jesus, in your precious, precious name. Amen. My heart content, my soul at peace, my life in you. Love released. My heart with deepest joy abounds. Our voice is ringing with heaven sound.
the lady Indescribably divine